Hey, Cypher here. This is actually part two of a two-part series about what caused the Mexican-American War. The last one was about what caused the Texas Revolution, which is an integral part, and it was super complicated. Though it was rooted in Americans' wish to conquer the area, it was also rooted in Amerindian tribes raiding and Mexico needing to secure against it, and then the whole process of centralization in Mexico. The immediate impetus of the war was the crazy world of coups and civil wars in Mexico itself. So the Texians eventually won their independence from Mexico, but Mexico never actually recognized that. It's really complicated, so you should go and watch that episode before watching this one. If you have though, we can now complete the journey. Unlike typical depictions, the Mexican-American War was not simply a war of American aggression. In fact, the initial aggressor was actually Mexico. So it's kind of complicated. Just like any war is, there are no precise answers. So what caused the Mexican-American War? Texas became sort of independent in 1836, but Mexico refused to recognize them. They repeatedly claimed Texas was still part of the country. Anti-centralist rebellions were cropping up all over Mexico. Some were temporarily successful. With the downfall of Santa Ana that accompanied the failure to crush the Texans, threw the whole country into further rebellion. Several states set up their own independent republics with all of Texas's southern neighbors unifying in 1840 under the proclaimed Republic of the Rio Grande. Before Mexico could take account of all that, Comanches began raiding again. They were unwilling to attack in the middle of the Texas Revolution, since everyone was armed and on the move, which are precisely the worst conditions for raiding. But as soon as they got the chance, they began again. Apaches and Navajos never really stopped, and Utes went as far afield as California in the 1830s. Texas started negotiations with the Comanche. They demanded more captives released, but the Comanche's political structure was not unified enough. When the Texans attempted to take the negotiators hostage in return, the Comanches fought back, which developed into their own massacre. Outraged, the Comanche Empire fought back by sending the greatest raiding party in their history. 1840 devastated everything along the Rio Grande, including the Republic of the Rio Grande. Mexico used the opportunity to recoup their losses by taking back the rebellious territory. Texas instead attacked New Mexico, trying to establish their claim over the Nueces Strip. That failed too, and instead, Texas turned to defense. They even established a navy to fight for access to the seas. Santa Ana came back to power in 1841. Texas was busy fighting Comanches when Mexico invaded again in 1842. With all this craziness, the United States seemed to have just dropped off the map. But assuredly, America was not watching idly by. From the beginning of the Texan Republic, various factions in the US government lobbied for annexation. Jackson didn't want to recognize the new republic until after the election concluded in 1836. The free states were wary of a possible change in favor of slave states since Texas legalized slavery. That whole thing was shelved in 1838 due to a change in the Texan administration. Something was changing in the US. A rising idea took over the discourse in the United States following the Texan Revolution. It came to be called Manifest Destiny in 1845. While many folks talked about what Jefferson had termed an empire of liberty, the notion took on a distinct providential ideology. When they said destiny, they meant it. As though taking Mexican territory was not only a goal, but something foreordained. Texas was the first annexation needed to fulfill that destiny. The Texans themselves could barely function on their own, degenerating into infighting after the various invasion failures. There were feuds and range wars all over the place. They managed to make peace with the Comanche, which only meant that those raids safely passed through Texan territory into the Nueces Strip and south of the Rio Grande, and thereby devastating northern Mexico beyond repair. 
With the re-election of Sam Houston as president of Texas, they began numerous negotiations over Texan sovereignty. Some ministers negotiated with Mexico, and others with the U.S. The secret negotiations with the U.S. leaked in 1844, just in time for the new Democratic candidate to take advantage. James K. Polk combined the calls of Manifest Destiny into his platform, but President Tyler was way ahead of him. He concluded the negotiations for annexing Texas, and the Senate passed the annexation treaty with only a few days to spare before Polk was inaugurated. Texas was part of the Union in 1845, but Mexico disagreed. The disputed Nueces Strip was, well, disputed. Texas had never secured her claim to it, and they had miserably failed to even establish a presence further upriver in New Mexico. But now, the might of the U.S. government could back up their claims, right? Polk certainly thought so, who sent General Taylor to occupy the Nueces Strip despite Congress having only approved the undisputed territory. He also sent John Slidell as an envoy to Mexico to offer money for the disputed territory and even offering to buy up the rebellious Alta California. But all this was rejected by Santa Ana. Well, patrols went into the disputed area anyways, and Mexico decided to push the issue by attacking some dragoons under a Captain Thornton. Just days before news of the attack reached Washington, Polk requested a declaration of war on Mexico over unsettled debts. They had borrowed around five million to prop up the centralist government. Everyone invaded Mexico in 1838 over unpaid debts, and now it was time to pay the piper. Again. Well, the Thornton Affair was the tipping point, and Congress declared war on Mexico. The war itself lasted for only two years with a decisive American victory. The U.S. managed to take most of Mexico's territory militarily. Some of the regions conquered actually fought for different reasons than Mexican sovereignty, like Alta California, which had been mostly autonomous for a decade. I covered it elsewhere. So the war was not exactly Americans versus Mexicans, but several territories on their own, let alone the Comanche raids that helped depopulate northern Mexico. Either way, the war resulted in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the U.S. not only got the disputed territory of Texas that began the war, but also annexed a great deal of territory to the west of the Rio Grande, including what is today California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. The U.S. paid for these territories by agreeing to pay for all Mexican debts and pay an additional $15 million. Along with all of this, the U.S. agreed to stop further incursions by raiding tribes. But the American military presence was never strong enough to be able to stop that. Along with disputes over the border, the issue of Indian raiding was relinquished in 1854, giving the U.S. more territory at the cost of another $10 million. So all this new territory came at a great cost, and many Americans thought that the treaty was actually a loss for America. There was an entire movement that sprung up towards the end of the war that called for the annexation of the entirety of Mexico. Many Americans, especially those within the All Mexico movement, felt betrayed by the limited territory the U.S. annexed. Some even started filibustering again into what remained of northern Mexico. Those would continue for a couple decades, but to no effect. Of course, many in the U.S. were opposed to this war from the beginning. People saw it as an immoral war, even though Mexico had killed first. New Englanders complained that taking Texas, let alone California, would allow for Southerners to become too powerful and expand slavery into the new territory. They weren't incorrect in terms of Texas, who already had legal slavery. New Mexico had its own form of slavery through captive raiding, plus there was a whole system of peonage on top of that. Famously, Henry David Thoreau refused to pay his taxes because of his opposition to the war and was put in jail for a day. When Ralph Waldo Emerson came to bail Thoreau out, he asked, what are you doing in there? Thoreau retorted, what are you doing out there? This became the foundation of Thoreau's book, Civil Disobedience which would go on to inspire the peaceful protests of the 20th century. From the creation of India, the function of a civil resistor is to provoke response, to the end of Jim Crow. So opposition to this war was pretty significant. John Quincy Adams, who returned to the House of Representatives in 1831 after his presidency, 
complained that the Democrats were making this war into a form of southern expansion, saying that it was purely to get more land to have bigger pens to cram with slaves. Whigs in general were against the war. A fairly unknown congressman named Abraham Lincoln made an issue of the beginning of the war a year after it started by introducing resolutions demanding that Polk point out the exact spot where the Thornton affair happened. He claimed that it was an act of war to enter the disputed territory, though by that same logic it was also an act of war by Mexico to do so weeks prior. Lincoln's belligerence made him anathema, and he quickly lost his seat in the following election. Hilariously, he would use the exact same tactic to justify the beginning of the Civil War in 1861 by maintaining forts in the South the same way Taylor patrolled disputed territory in 1846. That Civil War would ultimately be caused by arguments over slavery in the new territories. So the importance of understanding what caused the Mexican-American War is part of the issue surrounding the Civil War itself. As anyone studying warfare can tell you, there is no simple answer to the causes. Was it the US trying to grab up land from Mexico? Was it a reaction to Mexican tyranny or Comanche raiding? Nope. Instead, we can see the buildup of tensions between the US and Mexico over expansionism, ill-treatment, defensive needs, and budgetary or political necessity. The annexation was not merely the taking of land, for it was paid for, and could have been much more if the US so chose. Instead, there was a long history of disputed territory, popular revolts, and aggression. No answer is adequate, but some are better than others. Which do you think is the strongest? When Ralph... When Ralph Waddle... When... When Ralph... When Ralph Waddle...